Hi everybody, welcome to the walkthrough for Watts 1030 Introduction to Servers and Hosting Moving Files Assignment. So in this assignment we're focusing on moving files and cloning repositories using only the command line. So what we're going to do is um, actually we have about two major goals here. The first major goal is to get used to cloning repositories, moving files around, using command line to do all of that stuff. The second major goal is to get our DigitalOcean accounts all set up and be able to connect, um, be able to connect all of that. So, um, in order to do that, you are going to be required to have a DigitalOcean account. Now, technically, everything that we're learning here works on any hosting service. DigitalOcean provides you with what are called virtual private servers, and they call those droplets. That's their fancy name that they choose to use. Uh, to refer to their virtual private servers. We're going to create an Ubuntu drop it, droplet and then we're going to work through this. Again, you can use any flavor of Linux, but if you do use a different Linux distribution, then your commands might change just a little bit. Uh, specifically, the pro package manager is going to vary probably per distribution of Linux. Um, you're also going to be working with SSH keys and you're going to be using SSH to connect to your remote server. There are guides that are available to help you work with SSH keys and access, and there's guides for both Windows and Mac, and if you're already on a, on a Unix or Linux box, then it's everything's that much easier for you. Again, this is not the only place where you can use these. We're not really learning specifically DigitalOcean. What we're learning is the more general process for how one connects to servers and works with servers that are running Unix or Linux. So... We have a pretty extensive set of requirements in the basic requirements. We're going to install Git, and um, we're going to um, use apt Git to install Git, and we're going to configure Git, and then we're going to clone out the assignment repository. Once we've cloned out the assignment repository, then we will move through a set of challenges that work basically like the scavenger hunt worked on the last assignment, and that is a set of things that you'll do where the fact that you've successfully completed these things will be evidenced by the changes that are, are in the repository when you push them back up to your fork. So again, you're going to clone out your fork of the assignment repository, you're going to do some modifications, and then you're going to push back your changes to your GitHub account so that they can be reviewed. And so you'll walk through a whole bunch of different uh, things. There's pretty detailed instructions here, but we've also got... Um, a really great list of resources that you can use on the resources page for week three. So here's the week three resources page and as you can see there's a whole bunch of good ones. I'll add any more that I that I find or that, that get recommended or if you have specific problems we'll add some additional resources and we'll try to make a few more videos over this week but you have everything that you need here to to get in and find out all the information that you need to move through and successfully complete this assignment. Um, if you're looking for stretch requirements, then I s highly recommend that you try creating a droplet with a different um, kind of Linux. Um, I also uh, recommend that you try connecting to your droplet using as many different tools as possible. You could use different file management tools, uh, SFTP tool, a graphical Win C WinSCP tool, or, or a graphical SCP tool like WinSCP or something like that. Um, you could do all sorts of different things. Um, you know, to actually connect to your droplet and, and make modifications. So, uh, this is, like I say, a big assignment and you're going to walk through a lot of different steps and when you're done you're going to have a virtual private server running that you've got configured with um, Git on it and that can uh, and that you can use to log into and do the next assignment as well so it's worthwhile to keep this um, to, to set up this droplet properly and please don't delete this droplet after you're done you'll be able to keep using it um, if you don't want to keep paying for it to run then you can um, if you if you uh, don't want to um, pay for it to run, then you can always turn the power off on the droplet, but don't destroy the droplet. That's that's how you can save yourself a few bucks if you if you want to. But um, have have a blast. Uh, enjoy using command line Unix like a super hacker, awesome person. And I will uh, look forward to hearing back from you about how how all of this worked. Take care. Good luck.